In this video, we're going to look at the applications of the vector product. Now, the vector product can be used to find the areas of triangles, the areas of parallelograms, the areas, uh, sorry, the volumes of tetrahedrons, and the volumes of parallelopeds. So we're going to see how we do that. Now, we're going to omit most of the working out for this. You can see uh, most of the theory behind this, I should say, the proofs of this. Uh, you can see this in your notes, but um, really, we want to just jump and show how we actually do this. Okay, so the first thing is the area of a triangle. So the area of a triangle AOB, so that's a triangle that comes from O, has a point with position vector vector A, point B with position vector uh, B, and the area of that triangle is a half upon OA, OB times sine theta. So that's just from your half AB sine C uh, formula for the triangle. So that can just become a half modulus A modulus B sine theta. And really, if you think back to what your uh, formula is for a cross b, it is equal to uh, modulus of a modulus of b uh, times sine theta and times m, which is a unit vector. So if you modulus that, what happens is you just get your modulus a modulus b sine theta. Because remember this this bit here, the m bit here, sorry. Uh, the unit vector, it has a size 1. So that's why this uh, works, a half upon modulus of the vector product A cross B. So that's for the area of the triangle. So uh, very important here, before we move on to the next example, we understand uh, it's A cross B, where A is a length of one of the sides and B is a length of the other side. So if it doesn't start at the origin like ours did, we have to do something a wee bit different, as you will see. So in this example, you can see uh, here, the, you've got the angle theta, so that's between the side AB and the side AC. So what you've got to find, first of all, are your sides AB and your sides AC. So that's what I've done over here. So AB is B minus A, AC is C minus A. So the area of the triangle in this case would be equal to, uh, would be equal to, and you'll see, I, I would have done it a slightly different way. I would have just said, uh, area of the triangle here in this case is a half times modulus of, and I've forgotten what way this was drawn, AB cross AB cross AC. And that's a much easier way of doing it. So you just work out that, that side AB and that side AC, and then it's just the, the vector product of those, and then uh, modulus it, and then multiply it by half. And that's it, dead easy. Okay, an example then on this. So this is the easy one where the origin is one of your uh, vertices of your triangle. It says find the area of the triangle OAB, where O is the origin, A is position vector 2i minus j plus k, B has position vector 3, uh, 3i plus 4j minus 2k. So uh, first of all, just say area is equal to a half upon the modulus, and I'll do it, put it in a bracket, 2i minus j plus k cross 3i plus 4j minus 2k. Now to do this, uh, we're going to look at this thing. That's going to be a half upon, and then it's i, j, k. So this is how you remember how you do your vector product. So it's a modulus of a three by three, determinant of the three by three, I should say. So that's going to be a half times, and if you did that out, that's going to be um, I times it's going to be two minus four minus J. Don't forget your wee vector things, the vector lines the guy had done there. That's going to be minus four minus three plus K times 8 plus 3 and it really is a modulus of this whole thing so we'll sort that out in a wee minute so it's going to be half upon the modulus of that's going to be minus 2i uh, plus 7j plus 11k and then we're going to go from here so that is a half times the square root. And we'll just do those. Minus 2 squared is 4. 7 squared is 49. 11 squared is 121. 
which is just going to be a half upon the square root of 174 and that's going to be its area so we'll just say units squared this next example is slightly trickier this is one where you don't have the origin as one of your vertices of the triangle so a wee bit more difficult so it says find the area of the triangle ABC where the position vectors of A, B and C relative to the origin are and get list them and uh, we've got to go ahead and do this okay to do this first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find I'm going to make find A to B and I'm also going to find A to C now you notice uh, I've got the same I've used uh, A to someone something and A and A to something else so that has to be consistent I could have gone B to A and B to C it would have worked the same or C to A and C to B and that would have worked the same as well but just be consistent you're going from A to somewhere and then A the same place to somewhere else just to do these okay how you get A to B remember that's just going to be your position vector of B minus your position vector of A and if you work it out you're going to get I minus 9J plus 3K and your A to C is going to be your position vector C minus your position vector A if you work that one out you're going to get minus 3I uh, minus 3j there's no k component to that one okay now what we want to do is we want to do a b cross a c and see what we get so you get that using your determinant of the 3 by 3 so it's going to be 1 minus 9 3 upon uh, sorry in the third row it's going to be minus 3 minus 3 and 0 so we're going to do that running out of space here so if you do that out, what you're going to get is I upon, and it's going to be 0 plus 9 minus J upon, and it's going to be uh, 0 plus 9 again. Yep, that's right. And then plus K upon, and it's going to be minus 3 minus 27. So if you do that out, what you actually get is just going to be uh, 9i minus 9j and that's going to be minus 30 30k okay so I'll finish that over here and we'll just say our area is equal to a half upon the modulus of AB cross AC so that's going to be a half upon the square root and it is this 9 squared plus 9 squared sorry plus minus 9 squared technically plus minus 30 squared and so on so we're just going to do all of that out so it's going to be uh, 9 squared is going to be 81 the minus 9 squared is going to be 81 and the 30 squared is going to be 900 so if you do that hit that onto your end of your calculator it will come out as 3 over 2 upon root of 118 we're still talking about area, so it's going to be units squared. Okay, we're now going to look at two volume thing, uh, things that uh, the vector product can be used for, for volume. So the first one is the volume of a parallel of pipe head. So uh, again, I don't really want to work, have to run through all of the, the working out of this. Uh, it's all here, but if you can see, well, first of all here, uh, uh, an important mean result, which I'll be summing up at the end, if you just look at this, this is a, a parallelogram. Uh, so a parallel pipette is just, a, it's got a parallelogram as a cross section and then it's just, it's cast back. So if you look here, uh, they've just looked at the base of this parallel pipette, parallel pipette, sorry, uh, and the base of it is just a parallelogram. So a parallelogram, remember, is just a triangle doubled. So there's one of the triangles, so that would have been a half. Uh, B cross C or C cross B wouldn't matter which way around you do it. Uh, half times the modulus of B cross C. So the whole parallelogram would be just uh, C cross B, modulus of that, or else modulus of, of B cross C. Uh, and then they do another wee bit of working out, and you can see what you get as your result is this thing here. Uh, so it's modulus of A, modulus of A times B cross C, modulus of B cross C times cos uh, alpha. Um, so what this is really, that is the same as a dot b cross c. 
So this bit is a vector product and this bit is a, uh, the scalar. So you're doing the scalar. This thing will be a vector and then you're doing the dot product or the scalar product with A. Okay. So what that is called, if you, the other way you can write that is technically it should be written as A dot uh, brackets B cross C. Uh, but for some reason they allow us to write that as A dot B cross C. And this quantity is usually known as a triple scalar product. Okay, I'm going to skip past the volume of a tetrahedron in a minute because I'm going to show you how we can use, do this very, very easily. So where are we? Evaluating the triple scalar product. We know that B cross C can be evaluated as, uh, so you just, if you have B and cross C you want to do, you can just put your, do this in the, the, as a determinant of a three by three matrix. So I, J, K goes in the first row. The coefficients of B go in the second row. The coefficients of C go in the third row. So that would be fine. You could do that. So you could do that out and that would be fine. You would just get a, uh, a vector for that and then you could just do A dot whatever your resulting vector is. However, the triple, if you work through all that, you can see, and this result is invaluable the time it will save you, A dot uh, B cross C, so your triple scalar, pro uh, scalar product, is just the same as this one up here, except you put your A in the first row instead of your I, J, and K. So if you put the coefficients of your A in your first row, this result will be a scalar. And remember what this is, it's a triple scalar product which means it's going to be a scalar, it's going to be a number. So this result has no i, j's and k's in it, so this will just be a number, and that's it. Okay, let's go back to your result for your, oh, where are we, sorry, this was our uh, uh, parallel, parallel pipette, and the result was the following. It was a a dot b cross c, which is a triple scalar product, okay? So if you want to find the volume of parallel pipette, and it could be drawn uh, drawn any way at all, really. The only thing that's important, sorry, bear with me as I try and draw these things. Not much of an artist, but if you can imagine, you've got your, say you've got your A, and then maybe your B is going here, and then your C is going this way. It could be drawn that way, or you maybe you could have. Uh, Slightly differently, you could have your A going this way. That could be your B, and that could be your B or C. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you do it out, you, it will work out the same, no matter what way you do it out. Uh, but the one thing is important is these three vectors are all coming from the same point. So they're all coming from the same point here, and then you're good to go using this We result or one I prefer, really, this one. But they're the exactly the same thing. I just prefer, uh, prefer this one up here. Okay. The other one way of doing it, and this is our last uh, bit of notes in this, is a volume of the tetrahedron. Now, a tetrahedron has got a triangular base and then a vertical height. height. So it's a what's called it's a how many sides? A four-sided pyramid, really. So it's got a triangular base and then the three uh, sides going up to the top. Then, and the formula for it is, and this comes from the area. It's the area of a triangle and then height. And if you remember, a pyramid was for a pyramid, it was a, sorry, a third times the base area times a perpendicular height. So you'll get a third times a half times this thing. And this is just your A dot B cross, B cross C. So it's a third times a half. So that's where that, this comes from. Go through that in your own time. I rushed through that, but that's what we have, which is important. Okay, uh, we're gonna scoot onto, two, uh, onto an example here to finish us off. And this is, this result is, this is on tetrahedrons, but before that, I just want to put our results in that we have got so far. So we'll just squeeze them in here. So we have got four results. So area of a triangle is just equal to a half modulus A cross B. Now, very important, that's where A and B come from are the vectors, either the direction vectors on either side of a triangle, and they're both touching each other. Likewise, the area, and this is a parallelogram, so that's just a wee parallelogram drawing there. Same as the area of a triangle, except you don't have the half, so it's the modulus of A cross B. And then you've got your volume of your parallel pipette, 
and I will just draw that with a wee parallel we parallelogram and then give it a wee bit of depth to show it's a three-dimensional object and whoop terrible use your imagination and that is going to be equal to a dot b cross c i normally like to have the wee brackets around here but i'm just going to write it this is correct still writing it this way and then your last one is your volume of your tetrahedron so there you go there is uh you've got your triangular base pyramid and it was a six a sixth upon a dot b cross c so there's your results okay we're good to go we'll have a look at this example here it says a tetrahedron has vertices a b c and d as follows uh, relative to the origin find the volume of the tetrahedron now what you've got to do uh, remember just like your parallel pipette all your things have to come from the one point so i'm going to do all of my all of my my three vectors that i need for my volume of my tetrahedron i'm going to have them all coming from the one point i'm going to have them all coming from a so i'm going to find a to b i'm going to find a to c and i'm going to find a to d so a to b remember is just b minus a and when you work that out I have just got I plus I plus 2K. A to C is C minus A, which is going to be minus 2I plus 3K. And A to D is going to be vector D minus vector A. And when you work that one out, you're going to get 2I minus J plus K. So we're good to go. We'll say the volume. Of the tetrahedron, if, it's, if I could spell, sorry, tetrahedron is one sixth, and in this case, it's going to be um, one sixth times my. I'll do my a to b dot my a to c cross my a to d. Now it doesn't make a button of difference which way around you do these things. Uh, test that out for yourself if you wish uh, but that is going to be equal to then one sixth upon and it's a determinant of the three by three my first row is going to be it was i plus 2k so that's one zero two my second row is minus 2i plus 3k so that's minus two zero three and my third row is 2i minus j plus k so that's two minus one one and when you do that out, you're going to get a sixth upon. I'll do a square bracket, a sixth upon, and it's going to be one upon. Uh, so this is my cross out row and column out, row and column out, and you're left with this determinant. So it's going to be zero times one minus minus one times three. So that's going to be three. And then plus that's going to be minus zero times whatever who cares and then it's going to be plus two times and this one is going to be minus two times minus one which is two minus zero times two which is zero so two minus zero which is just going to be two we'll close that off and what do we have then we have a sixth upon a sixth upon uh three plus three plus a four which is going to be seven so seven over six so we're just going to say 7 over 6, which is equal to 1 and 1 sixth units, its volume, so units cubed. Okay, folks, you're now ready to do uh, the following exercise, and you've got questions listed there and listed in your notes. That's it.